Hi sir, I'll be discussing the charge density plots in this video. So um, let me just go to the Oscar or the structure that I'm going to use. So here I'll be discussing about this structure, the cadmium selenide doped with iron with one cadmium vacancy. So we have 88 cadmium and one iron dope with, uh, yeah, sorry, 88 cadmium and one iron, so we have one cadmium vacancy. Now, it can be neutral system or it can be a charged system. So if I add in one extra electron, then it is going to be a negatively charged system. And if I remove electrons from it, it will be a positively charged system in VASP. And that is in the case of VASP because the calculations are being done in VASP. Now, as we know, that we can't place the electron at a specific position. So therefore, we just have to rely on VASP to tell us where exactly that electron can go or where exactly, how exactly the charge will be distributed. So I'm proposing that if I have a cadmium selenide doped with iron with one cadmium vacancy, and it's, if it's a neutral system, then the charge will be going into that cadmium vacancy and it is going to be Fe3 plus and not Fe2 plus. Now I'll be showing you that using all the charge density plots that we have done so far. So I'll first show you the structure that is right here. So this is the structure that we're using. So here are the brown balls that you see, those are the cadiums. So these are brown ones, they are the cadiums. The white ones or the silver ones, they're selenium. This gold one, that is iron. So here is the iron that is in the substitution site. And now I'll be showing you the cadium vacancy. So you see right here, there is a vacancy right here. And for you to visualize that, I'll just move it around. So you see, you're just seeing these three, one, two, and three cadmium atoms in the line. And you see there is something missing over here. If you look at the other rows, like you look at this one, you see there are four cadmium atoms. But when you come right here, there are three of them. So there is a space right here. So there was supposed to be a cadmium atom right here, which is missing. So that is our cadmium vacancy. So this is the post car file. This is not the um, charge car. So now let me explain you the color coding that you will be seeing in all the charge density plots. Whenever the, there is a decrease in the charge, you will see blue color. Whenever there is an increase in the charge, you will see green or yellow color. Let me show you the colors. They're right here. So the blue color represents that there is a decrease in the charge the yellow or olive green or green that represents that is this color right here that represents that there is an increase in the charge now in order to do these plots now this is the difference between different um, uh, charge plots that will be initial structure final structure so that difference is going to give us this but if not if the regular charge plot will look like this this is the regular system Okay, now what we do over here is we take the initial, not, not the initial structure, but the final structure that we have. So in our case, uh, let's say for example, if we are looking at the, this one, cadmium selenide uh, dope with um, iron with a cadmium vacancy. So that would be our initial structure. We'll subtract this structure from, sorry. So we'll be subtracting this, my bad. So we'll be subtracting this from. So we'll be subtracting this from the structure that we have, okay? And then we'll be subtracting others, we'll be subtracting iron, adding cadmium, and so on. But 
So this is basically what we're doing. We're subtracting two structures. So let's say this structure has more charge than this structure at a certain position. So what do I mean by a certain position? I'll go back to the plots. I'm going to the postcard. So let's say this iron right here. Let's just for an example sake, I'm saying that there is a charge of 20 on this. And then the next structure, which would be a cadmium selenide. So in this case right here, so there is a cadmium at that position. Let's say that has a charge of 10. So the initial one had a charge of 20. The final one or the next one that is a cadmium 90 selenium 90 has a charge of 10. So in that case, I'll end up getting a positive value of 10. So therefore, what I will see over here would be this yellow color. But let's say if it was the opposite, that means in case of the dope structure, at that specific position of iron, the charge was 10. And in the final structure, or sorry, in the next structure, the discadium 90, selenium 90, the charge was 20 for that specific atom, then I'll end up with a difference of minus 10. So in that case, what I will see over here is the blue color. So that will give you an idea that of the colors. So whenever the initial structure has more charge, you're going to see this yellow color. Whenever the initial structure has less charge, then this is the color that we are going to see. Now, let's say that there is no charge difference at all. So that means the initial structure and the final structure, that is the cadmium atom, or let's say the cadmium atom at one position minus a cadmium atom um, at the same position in the next structure, that is cadmium atom in this one and the cadmium atom in this one. Let's say both they both have a charge of 10. So therefore, there will be no difference. Now, how would that look like? Let me show you. There'll be no charge density at all. So I'll show you an example. I already did it over here because it takes time. So you see over here, this is um, a cadmium 90, selenium 90 structure, and I subtracted one cadmium atom, the charge car for one cadmium atom. So you see right here, you can see the atom. There is no color on top of it. There is no blue and there is no yellow. So if it was vacant or let's say if it was the cadmium selenide with a vacancy okay so right now i'm talking about um, this structure i'm not changing the structure or changing the topic but just to give an example let's say if it was this structure so it was just one single cadmium vacancy so if it was just one single cadmium vacancy if and when i subtract that from the uh, with this one, sorry. So if I subtract it from this one, and then because so here I have only one eighty nine atoms. Sorry, my mistake. Um, I have one seventy nine atoms right here. I have one seventy nine atoms here. I have one eighty atoms. So then I'll also have to subtract another CD over here so that, or I'll be adding it right here. So that will be subtracting. So what I'm doing is I'm subtracting the cadmium atom that is in that vacancy. So when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm making this. So when I subtract this from this one, I'll be removing the atom that was already removed from here. So then this final thing that I get right here would actually have the same number of atoms as this one. So this one now will have 89 cadmium atoms because I'm basically subtracting one cadmium from this structure. So I'll be subtracting the that very cadmium atom that I removed from this structure right here. So when I subtract this, if there is no charge at all in that cadmium vacancy. So I'm just using the structure for reference purpose, the postcard, right. So if there's no charge at all in this cadmium vacancy, then it should appear 
blank like this or blank like this. Okay, so if I didn't have a cadmium atom right here, let me just delete it just for the sake of it. Yeah, so then it is supposed to look blank like this. If it does not look blank like this, right, with no atom at all, then that means that there is some charge. Either charge going in or charge coming out. Now, if we see a yellow color, okay, let's say I'm calling it yellow. So if I see, when I subtract these two, if I see a yellow right there, that means that there was more charge in this compared to the charge in this, these two together. Okay, so if there was some charge, then it's going to show up when I'll be doing a charge difference of charge plots of these two. But let's say if there was less charge in this one compared to the charge over here, then what I'm going to see is a blue color. So this yellow color and this blue. So once again, if here I had more charge of that cadmium vacancy compared to what I'm getting from here, because in this case, what you will see, um, let me again, in this case, the one that I've highlighted, what you will see is this, because this is basically what it is. There is nothing over there. There is no charge going out. There's no charge coming in. It's absolutely zero. You see, there is no, there is nothing right here. There is no yellow surface, no blue surface. So therefore, if this minus this is going to give us zero, that means there is nothing. If I'm going to get zero, that means there is nothing. If I get a yellow color, that means there was a charge right here. Okay, it can be um, 10, 20, whatever charge. And there can be charge right here less than that so it can be the less all the way down to zero so in this case there is zero as i showed you in the previous diagram so if it's zero what you're going to see is yellow but if here the charge was less like this by any amount then you're going to see a blue okay so just giving you the idea of colors now as i told you that i am proposing that electrons in case of a neutral case electrons from um, the iron and the surrounding selenium atoms or cadmium atoms, wherever it is, they are going to go and fill up the vacancy. Okay. So this I'm going to show you based upon our charge density plots. Now, the first plot that I'll be looking at will be for the cadmium vacancy. Now, this is a neutral cadmium vacancy. Now, I've used this, these colors, white and uh, gray, but um, uh, for, because when I looked at the paper by Zunga, as you'll see, okay, I, I'll take time for it to upload, uh, but in the paper by Zunga, that is the color that he used. Let me get the paper, Zunga's paper. So in Zunger's paper right here, right, let me zoom it, you can also see it here. What we see is gray, white, so I'm using the same color coding. Okay, now let me just check the time, I'll have to stop it and restart it. You see the amount of time that I've spent. Uh, Stop recording and I'll do the next one.